Hey everybody, this is Everyday Commentary, and this is a Sweet Stuff Saturday, not recorded on a Saturday. They're usually not recorded on a Saturday. Trying to record something on Saturday morning is impossible. Two kids, a busy life, it's just not gonna happen. So, I usually record these during the week, and then I'm try to release them on a Saturday. And sometimes I even miss that. But the goal here is to have weekly content. I've done it for about a year now, and it ends up working out fine. So, let's talk about the two knives that are on the uh, review block coming up next. The first one is the Alamut Cutlery Whippersnapper. This is a front flipper design with uh, 20 CV steel. It's produced in the normal Alamut way, which is you get the pattern, and then you can choose upgrades to the pattern. Sometimes they release batches where you don't get to pick, but you can buy them if you like what they look like. This one is a titanium handle with a band of um, lightning anno material on it. And so there's a band here, the clip, pocket clip, or the, the pivot. And then as you can see on the back, it kind of looks like a river. Really cool little back uh, carved backspacer. Um, you know, the standoffs, as is typical with uh, Olympic, they're not sandwiched, they're balanced, it looks Gives it kind of a sophisticated look. This knife starts at 650 bucks. I think this one is probably significantly more given the anodization. Uh, there are two versions of the Whippersnapper. There's this version, and then there's one that has an absolutely straight across blade. One of them is a sheep foot, one is a worn cliff. I don't really know. The, the blade here is really bulbous, but it gives you really great control. I mean, you have a huge handle and a relatively small cutting edge. And that gives you really good scalpel-like control. I like the, the way that this knife fits in hand, even if I probably wouldn't get the same blade shape. But this is on loan from Nick, and uh, I can't wait to review it because I really have always enjoyed the uh, Olamec stuff that I've gotten. So, there's that knife. And then the other knife is the... Ben Peterson Nafsco Lander. Um, this knife, which I got for my birthday, is a very small, not very small, but small-ish pocket knife. It, it has uh, D2 steel and it has hot swappable handles. It's a liner lock and it runs on a bearing pivot. It has a deep carry over the top pocket clip. It comes in at about 50 bucks. As you can see, there it is next to the very, 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 very small um, Zebralite SC5C2 limited edition. This is a very compact um, a one AA battery flashlight, and it easily, easily pairs with this guy. Really good setup here. Very small, very compact, and comparatively high performance. There's a lot of little features in this knife that are kind of interesting. So, um, first of all, I believe this knife is made by We to Vivi. Uh, ben has had two collaborations with them, the Banter and the Baby Banter. But this is the first knife that he's had made by them and released under his own label. And you can get this in blue or black G10 with a black washed blade or a satin finished blade. This is just the one that I got for my birthday. Uh, I asked somebody to get the knife for me, and voila. Um, so, a couple cool things. So, if you look at the blade shape, the blade shape is a really normal drop point blade shape. But, and this is something that I find really interesting, it has a negative cutting angle on the blade. So, no, what I mean by that is normally the blade goes straight across. It kind of makes like a flat straight away here you know the um the non-belly portion of the blade meets um the the handle at a roughly parallel plane here instead of at the parallel plane the the belly of the blade kind of sneaks up and what this does is when you are cutting material it gives you a little bit more of a bite it's like having a recurve but instead of having the difficulty of sharpening the recurve, you have the ease of sharpening a regular blade, but you still get that negative angle 
compared to the parallel plane of the handle. Really, really nice little touch. And you'll see this often on a lot of high-end production or custom traditional knives. And this is a way, as I said, to boost the cutting power of a blade without impacting the sharpenability of the blade. So that's a really good thing. Another thing that I like about this knife, it's just a very subtle touch, is this little access point here. Nothing kind of crazy, but by making the handles asymmetrical, and you can see, let's close this up, you can see really it like almost contacts the thumb stud here. But on this side, you got plenty of room so you can access the thumb stud and pop the knife open. That is uh, not an uncommon feature, but it's not as common as you'd think it would be. And the end result is just this subtle little change in the curvature of this uh, line right here. It gives you good access to the lock bar and good access to the thumb stud. So really, really good. The next thing that I think is interesting about this knife is the size. At like 2.65 inches, this is clearly under three inches, but it's not so small that you can't get a full four finger grip. Now, I have medium sized glove hands and I can get a full four finger grip on this knife. It also works on a three finger grip as well, but this size is just like right in between a bunch of sizes and it works very, very well. Uh, and then the final thing that I think is interesting, just like a little nice touch, they have a filler tab here for the uh, pocket clip attachment point. So you take this out and you swap it over and put the clip on the other side. It is just, you know, you don't expect that on a really, really inexpensive knife. I mean, our definition of budget knife has certainly changed. It used to be like under $30, and now I think it's like $50 or under. And this is a very interesting little budget knife, and there are lots of smart little touches here. Uh, last little touch, I think I said final touch before, but last little touch is this. No exposed blade tang, and he rounded off the tang of the blade here so that when it's closed, the curve of the tang of the blade meets up with the curve of the handle, and there's no hot spots anywhere on this knife when the knife is closed. When the knife is open, of course, you're going to get a little hot spot from the clip, but it's nothing too terrible. We've got a uh, little run of jimping. The star here is really the deployment. I mean, you can just absolutely pop this out each and every time. It's very, very easy. In fact, that was, that was not a fair one because I held on the blade. Like getting it to fail to open requires just the right, like that one, whew, just the right touch. But uh, really great deployment as uh, you will often find on lean knives. Not a bit of blade play. Some of the knives out there, including some pretty high-end knives, they'll cheat and get that really kinetic action by keeping the blade pivot a little loose. Uh, nothing like that here. Really, really tight blade pivot. I like this knife a lot. So both of these are in for review. I look forward to writing the reviews. I'll probably put up a review of this knife on Gear Junkie in December. Really, really good little knife. Um, and you should probably look in the gear of the year to see where this knife finishes. Uh, I'm still working on that list right now. And uh, having it in hand has caused it to hop up a couple of steps. So we'll see where it ends up. But uh, I'm pretty excited about writing the gear of the year article. This has been a pretty slow year. So... Um, you know, we'll see what happens.